My journey from $150,000 in debt to making over a million dollars per month is what I'm going to discuss in this video. But most importantly, I'm going to share with you guys top three things that I learned throughout this entire journey after I talked to you guys a little bit about my story and just how I got here even in the first place. So if this is your first time to the channel, consider subscribing and also smash that thumbs up button. It truly helps us with the algorithm. So one thing that I want to talk to you guys about is back to where I was in 2013, which was about eight years ago. And it really feels like it was like three months ago, right? Um, I had been handed over almost a quarter million dollars from my dad. And that's because in many other videos I've explained, growing up, my father was wealthy. And as I grew up in, 2000, in, in 1990, and then in the early 90s, my father's business started declining, especially because of all the war that was happening in Iraq. And in 2003, when we fled Iraq, we came to America with zero money. So my dad always kind of felt like he was obligated to provide me the kind of lifestyle that my older siblings had, right? Because I was the youngest one in the family. So in 2012, 2013, uh, well, as 2010, 2011, he had sold some of his properties back home because he was now able to go back home and, you know, reclaim some of his properties. And then he wired about $200,000 into my bank account. And he said, look, if you want to become a doctor, go do it because that's what your mom wants. Or if you want to become an entrepreneur, go and do it. And as I went through that journey of having money, investing in a business that I know zero about and losing it all, going through disputes, going through heartaches, going through, you know, going to jail really for, get, for, for, uh, uh, for getting a DUI after because I was depressed and started drinking heavily and um, being $150,000 in debt going to dishwashing, driving for Uber, doing all that and launching seven businesses until finally the eighth one uh, succeeded and hiring, firing tens and tens and tens of people and, 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 and launching all kinds of business deals and stuff like that. You have kind of a front seat here to what all that experience really did and how it shaped me to become the person I am today, right? So the very first thing that I want to share with you guys is um, if you're not growing, you're dying. And that's something that a lot of people lack, especially when they start making it. Um, there's something around that $10,000 a month um, that people really aspire to do. And I know for me, that was a huge goal, um, especially when I had been running a, re a business for the last three years that generated zero profits. And then I went on for the next two years, um, trying all kinds of other businesses and doing all kinds of stuff that simply generated zero profit. So making $10,000 per month was huge, right? Because it was gonna help me retire my parents, it was gonna help me clear out my debt, it was gonna help me finally be able to uh, marry the love of my life and just do all these things. Um, so once I had a business that started producing some profits, um, I quickly went back into, you know, I've never made this kind of money. Let me kind of relax. I would start going out to the, to the beach and getting drunk with friends and, and just having a good time. And then I quickly realized that that business just fell and collapsed on top of my head because I was not growing anymore. I got it to a certain point because I was hungry. But once I got there, I simply lost that hunger, right? And that business just fell apart. So that's one very strong lesson that I learned is on top of obviously losing everything, but even when you start making money, you need to keep growing, right? And some people may say, but if say $10,000 is, you know, beyond my wildest dreams and I only really need to live on three, $4,000 and I'm making two, three times more than what I really need and I have savings accounts and all that, why should I keep working hard? Well, see, when people think like that, I believe that they are being selfish because if you have an acquire a skill that can help you make $10,000 per month, that's awesome because 60, 70, 80% of the population of the world doesn't make half of that, right? So now you've got an awesome skill that you've been able to tap into. Why not keep making more? Why not keep accomplishing more? Because you see, every single one of us deep down inside really wants to help others. Now, some of you may not care about being a philanthropist or donating to charities or whatever, that's cool. But I'm pretty sure every single person has a family member, a parent, a sibling, or somebody that they care for that they wanna provide a better life for. And answer me this, don't you think you'll be able to help that person or that group of people 
more when you've got a million dollars in a bank than if you have $100,000 in a bank? Because I know the answer. I know for me, I would definitely be able to help, it, help them out if I've got a million dollars than if I have $100,000, right? Or just simply help out more people, right? So that's one huge one for me, right? And in order for you to get there, you need to keep growing. You need to keep driving forward because again, if you're not growing, you're dying. Now look, if this is your first time on the channel, consider subscribing and drop in the comment section what questions you have about this topic or what more um, topics you'd like to see from this channel. So the very second thing is, um, the more you give, the more you'll get. And this is what I mean by this. So one thing that I realized is that the more I kept on just keeping it to myself, again, I, w I wasn't motivated to get more, right? Because I just had more than I needed. And so there wasn't a motive <clears throat> to go and get more because again, it's like, well, if I live below my means and I'm making two, three times more than what I really need to live, why should I keep going out there and making more? But because I started tapping into this thing of, I want to give, I want to help other people. I, it's not about me, me, me anymore. It's about them. How can we help them? <clears throat> And them for you is different than, than them for me. For us, for BJK University, we are on a mission to impact 1 million lives. And that's why BJK University even started. Because it was all about me. I started selling on Amazon and it was all about me. And I started making 10 and 20 and 30 and $40,000 a month in net profits. And then I got to a level where I just started falling, right? Because it was more money than I could ever dream of. I was now part of the 1%. But it wasn't about me anymore. And I knew that because of previous experiences, I needed to keep growing. But if it was only going to be about me, I just wasn't going to be able to grow anymore. Just simply because I didn't need more than twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 per month in net profits to live on. Until this day, my company makes millions of dollars every year in profits. And I really only live on $10,000 a month. And in fact, at the end of every month, I usually put away about one to $3,000 in my savings account, in my personal savings account, right? Because I live below my means, right? But I would rather have that option of living below my means than not having the option and then scraping by just to make ends meet, right? So the more you give, the more you'll get. And when you give, don't have the mindset of, well, I'm giving you because I'm expecting you to give me back. No, what can I do? always come from place of service. What can I do to impact your life? What can I do to add value to you? What can I do to make sure that you are becoming the best version of yourself? What can I do to make that happen for you, right? And people just feel, feel so much, so obligated because you're giving them so much without an agenda that they just wanna come back and give back to you. The very third thing is always go against the status quo. And what I mean by that is regardless where you are, in life, age, culture, ethnicity, background, country, uh, niche, business, doesn't matter your studies, your, your work, whatever it is that you're doing, there's always set expectations and there's always like, well, this is what it's, what's, how it's always been and we expect you to operate within those parameters. I say, screw that. I say, always go against what everybody else expects always go against what everybody else believes or says that it's what's possible because screw what's possible. We're always trying to break records. We're always trying to accomplish things that have never been accomplished before because that's the only, re the only time we can grow beyond anything imaginable, right? Because the greatest things happen when people innovate. The greatest things happen when you actually think outside of the box. And then you go out there and you put yourself out of your comfort zone and you start innovating and you start playing around and optimizing and tweaking things and saying, okay, well, this is great. How can we make it excellent? This is good. How can we make it great? Right? So always go against the status quo. Always look at who is the best player in your industry and say, not how can I compete with them, but how can I demolish them? How can I make sure that whatever I do, regardless how great they have accomplished things, it just it, it pales in comparison to what I'm trying to do. Again, 
not by going against them or you know, uh, 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 trying to blackmail them or trying to push them out of business. No, I'm not trying to say that. What I'm trying to say is just do what every, just look at what everybody else is doing within your vicinity of whatever it is that you're trying to do. And then just do something so much greater. And that could not be possible by you watching them and then just trying to make your thing better by just becoming a better mousetrap. No, screw that. Look at Elon Musk, for instance. Right now, BMW and Mercedes have, are the two top um, companies in the industry, in the car business, in terms of net worth. I think they're worth about 50 or $60 billion. And they've been around for 40, 50, 60 years. Tesla has been around for less than two decades. And Tesla is worth 10 times that. Why? Because Elon Musk did not come and create another car, just a different way, different manufacturer, instead of being built in Italy or France or, or, or Japan or uh, Germany, he built it in South Africa or whatever. But what he did is that he did something completely different. He innovated. He changed the car industry. And in the beginning, everybody said that he was crazy. Everybody said, dude, you are insane. Now, everybody and their sister are building electric cars. Why? Because he disrupted the status quo. He went against what everybody else was saying. He did something so massive that people couldn't fathom and could not simply compete. He didn't look at what everyone else was doing in the market and said, how can I do it better? He just went out there and then said, you know what? Screw all this. I'm going to do something so massive that people will just be dumbfounded by what I'm doing. Again, if you found this channel valuable, please subscribe. If you haven't already, smash thumbs up button because it truly helps us in the algorithm and also let me know which of those three things that really resonated with you most in the comment sections below. Hope to see you in the next video. Take care.